So, hi everyone, I am Claudia from Italy, and in this episode of HDU Community Stories, we will be speaking with participants from the International Roundtable that was organized by HD Community Advisory Board, or HDCAB. HDCAB is a partnership between HDYO, the European Huntington Association, and the International Huntington Association, and was held in Strasbourg on September 15, 2024. If you want to know more about HDCAB, you can visit the website at hd-cab.org. And um, this roundtable was a meeting that aimed to provide equitable and unbiased access to the global HD community. Representatives from various pharmaceutical companies, research organizations, and advocates from the HD community, including people at risk, gene positive and gene negative, were present. So partners could submit questions prior to the meeting that were then expanded to beneficial to the multiple parties attending to this roundtable. So the goals of the roundtable include fair fair and impartial access to the HD community to accelerate key research questions, understanding the risk and benefit concept for the global HD community and the collaborating to overcome barriers to treatment approval. Additionally, it, uh, it aims to explore how broader studies can be conducted to gather more data and ensure the inclusion of younger voices that which have often been underrepresented. So in this interview, we will hear directly from those who took part in this important discussion. So hi, Rob. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for being here. And if you can start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about you, I don't know, maybe Rob, you can start. Sure, no problem. So, my name is Rob Hasberg. I live in the Netherlands and um, I'm HD gene positive myself uh, and an active member of the community in the Netherlands, but also in Europe and also since its inception in Canada. Okay. And that's it. Hi, guys. I'm Jessica. Um, from Switzerland, but I was raised in Venezuela, so I'm half half. <laughs> um, I'm also the study coordinator from the Swiss Huntington Center. I am the president of the Huntington Association and I'm also very active in the community among Europe and also in Venezuela. Thank you. So Jessica, I'm going to continue with you and ask you how and why did you decide to become an HD advocate? Because of my personal connection with this disease and I, I think we need to, to stay informed and as a family member, I think it's my duty to be, to do something. Thank you. And Rob, what about you? <clears throat> yeah, almost the same, I think, as Jessica. I mean, I come from an HD family, and I noticed that I, uh, I've gotten a lot of support throughout my own journey towards testing and acceptance of my gene positivity, let's say. Um, so I, now I am giving back to the community what I have received. So, yeah, I think it's very important to do that. And thank you. Thank you for all your work. And and everything you do. So, Rob, when you first knew about the roundtable in Strasbourg, what were your expectations? Yeah, I've learned to not set expectations for myself, but I thought this is a really great initiative, you know, like I really, because this is the first time we did it like this, you know, to interact sort of with pharma, without pharma. They were there, but not part of the conversation. So it's actually, I like that idea. So when there was an opportunity to say yes, I can participate. I said, yeah, please count me in because it is a good way of sharing experiences. So I had not have any big expectations as an outcome, but just, you know, just to have the fun, uh, the fun of the conversation actually with the rest of us. And I think uh, I did think it was a fun conversation to have with 10 other people. Yeah. And Jessica, what do you think? Thank God you said that <laughs> because I also had no expectations whatsoever. So 
I just thought, let's have fun, <laughs> whatever it comes. <laughs> so, and it was indeed fun. Definitely. Yeah. And um, that's how, how did you push for the event, you know? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Oh, sorry. So, Jessica, how did you prepare for, for this roundtable event? Well, um, we did some meetings. <laughs> so we talked about it. And I think it's through time that I've been preparing to speak about Huntington. So I think it, it's a lot of things together, apart from the meetings that we have had. And Rob, what about you? Did you prepare in some way? Uh, well, I think just being part of HDCAP for so long is a preparation on its own, we, you know, with all the trainings that we have done over time or the information we have gotten. And maybe I'm a bit biased myself because I work in pharmaceutical industry, so I sort of through that understand the industry side of things. So that sort of, you know, that that is another part of my life that just came in handy with this roundtable discussion. Let's say. <laughs> so yeah, that that was a preparation that contributed to the preparation for sure. And where during during the roundtable there were some moments I don't know that were particularly challenging or emotional for you. I don't know, Rob, if you can start. Well, I think it is what always touches me. First of all, is just the introduction round because although we are in HD cap together, I, I don't know all the people personally, right? So I, I don't know their the details of their personal stories. So if I hear their personal stories, it does touch me a lot. Um, especially the people that I've met for the first time, like Jessica, you know, not knowing where she comes from and understanding her Venezuelan story. That is very impactful, to be honest. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, I come from a country that is quite privileged in the care and how things are arranged for Huntington and to understand through these discussions how in other countries this definitely is not the case. You know, that also makes you wonder like, oh, I'm lucky, you know, and that, that still now it touches me if I think about it, that I, yeah. it gets me a bit watery in my eyes that I'm like, oh, I'm a lucky person, you know, that that still is a, something that I can, yeah, feel now when I say it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Jessica, what do you think? There were some, I don't know, difficult or emotional moments. How did you navigate navigate those? I think it's it's the same. I, I mean, all the the stories that we hear, um, we face almost the same struggle, even though we're not in the same country or with the same culture, we face the same struggles. So, I think it. Yeah, it hits me every time. But I think it's very important to hear it because that's the only way we can process and that's the only way we can we can move forward. Yeah, for me, you know, I think one of the most emotional moments were, was during the break because we had a little break and you know, looking at all the people, pharmaceutical companies, advocates, organizations, everyone just hanging there and talking. That was like, wow, I'm here. I, I'm doing something that really matters. And that was, wow, so, so powerful. And, you know, talking about that, where um, I'm going to go with Jessica. During the round table, what do you feel were the, you know, the most important topics that were addressed? And of course, why? Well, I'm going to be a bit Swiss. I think all topics were very important. And I think all of them are very valuable. 
because there are no such thing as a small story. Um, with the personal stories, with the regulators, things, with the scientific research, I mean, everything, it's very important. So I think everything was important. Thank you, thank you, and you're absolutely right. And Ram, what do you think? Yeah, I think I can only agree with Jessica on that one, because it, it was a real conversation from start to end, you know, so you need all the different parts to have this conversation. You cannot just look at an isolate. I mean, of course, it's important access to cure or whatever, or clinical trial recruitment. I mean, all the individual parts are very important, but only when you have them all in one context, in one conversation, you actually understand like, oh, wow, this is the whole thing. And maybe not even the whole thing that we discussed, but at least so, yeah, it is nice to have the, the whole overview and also to make everybody aware of those different parts, right? So these pharmaceutical companies are aware, but also that we are vocal on all these aspects and that we have our eye on it. I think it also gives them a little bit of a feeling like, oh, they know what they are talking about. So Rob, you have participated in advisory board meeting with pharmaceutical companies and this round table. So what are the things that these companies need to keep asking based on how the conversation went in, in the round table? I think the one that I liked a lot is the exercise that you did where we just had to respond to terms, whether we know them or not, you know? So really the, the pharma lingo, uh, so to say, uh, it, it was a good eye opener for them again, that probably none of us are not every one of us, although we are well informed, know everything about everything, right? So communication, I think what came through all the aspects is communication with the community is very important. So it started with this kind of fun game that you did, but that was the conclusion is that the communication, and we have told this many times to pharma companies, keep communicating, keep clear language. But this is something that we have to keep reinforcing, I think, because it is very easy for any partner, let's say, to to forget that there is a way of communicating with patient organizations and it's not in language that relates to investors or these kind of bigger things that they communicate for. Jessica, you have your hand in many communities care in Switzerland and with your family in Venezuela. How do you think what about about what Bob said about the need for better communication? I I do agree with Rob, I mean, communication is the most important thing. And sometimes we got lost in translations and we forget what's the most important thing about the whole thing we're doing. And it's very easy for the pharma companies to, to, for, yeah, to forget to, to tell us how how everything is going without these complicated words. So I do think this breach that we are doing now with the community and the pharma would help a lot or is helping a lot the community all around the world. So for me, you know, I think that not coming from a scientific background like you guys, you know, for me, the kind of questions like how do you understand this and do you perfectly understand this about, you know scientific terms and trial terms something that most of the people don't understand that was really really important for me and i think it's something that we need to keep asking like how do you understand it how can i make it more understandable to you and you know coming from italy myself where people don't speak a lot of english that's really really more more important and well, I just wanted to ask Jessica, participating in this event, you know, influenced or changed, you know, some, in some ways your perspective on Huntington disease and its future system or support system? Uh, no, it didn't change my view. I think it gave me like, energy boost and motivation to keep doing what I'm doing. It 
opened my eyes, made it a bit brighter to see that we need more information, we need to raise awareness, we need we need to grow as a community. We're doing a great job, but still we have a long path to go through. And I think what we're doing is great and we need to keep on doing it. Yeah. Do you think? So, yeah, I don't think it also, I don't think it really changed my perspective on things or at least, but it, it did make me aware that we sh we can be more united or more vocal as a community, I think. I mean, we do our best and we do great, but there's definitely steps to be made um, also towards regulators or maybe even to industry itself. So there's definitely things that we can still pick up. And maybe as Jessica said, it just gives me a little bit of extra motivation to keep doing what I'm doing and see how we can help each other. I think that's the you know, the, the basic premise overall. Well, I guess we can say that participating basically reinforced your views on your role as an advocate for this community. And I think I can totally relate. It was really a, a boost of energy, as Jessica said. And, uh, you know, in, impacting you personally this time, and I'm going with Jessica. What are, you know, the key takeaways from this round table that you believe will be, will have the most impact on on you, Jessica. I think I cannot get tired to say that we need more information, more awareness. We need to train not only the family members or the community. We need to train healthcare, pharma companies. We need to. To work together we need to be a team we need to be a family so that's i don't know that's that's my slang that's everything that i'm going to say and i repeat it every single time <laughs> that's good thing to rob what yeah, you're doing i think for me personally I, I, yeah you know what I what I realized is that there's a lot of work coming our way as a community. Only looking at the pharma side of things, you know, a lot of companies there, a lot of developments, a lot of maybe challenges that lie ahead. That I think as a community and maybe personally because I have some kind of connection with pharma, I can be of help. Let's say, so I see that and I think, oh, there's something we should do. You know, so that that really felt like there's a there's a bunch of work to be done. Uh, which we will pick up, I'm sure this is something. And I think it's a luxury position to be in as a community. You know, if you see the, the, the pharmaceutical development coming towards you, so I think we also should appreciate the fact that this is actually happening and then take, take the work and start doing it. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to add, you know, one of my key takeaways, it's not, well, not pharma related because it's more of this sense of connection with with people, people that live in my or kind of my situation. You, I, I knew Rob, but I didn't know Jessica, so I had the the fantastic opportunity to meet her and to meet all the, all of these people. For me, it's a cost, constant reminder that this, that this community is working. It's worldwide. We're we are here and we are actually doing something. And yeah, as Rob says, we we still have some steps on the way. But we we are doing that, and uh, so you know, what about you and your sense of connection with other advocates? What what did you did you experience about that, Rob? Hmm. I was telling this after the conference. You know, at the end of it, I was my my social battery was empty, and that is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. I have been talking to so many people and connected with so many countries, let's say, so the, the representatives of countries. I had, well, I also, first time I met Jessica, but also other people that I know from online or from emails. So, yeah, it just reminded me again that, you know, HD is a global community and I make a lot of good friends along the way, which I think I appreciate a lot. So after such a conference, I'm, I'm tired mentally, 
but with very good thoughts of it. Thanks, great. Thanks for sharing. Jessica? I need to laugh because I was, I was experiencing the same thing. I was so tired. I needed like a break. But it gave me and it always gives me this sense of belonging somewhere. I belong here. So I can speak openly about it and everybody understands what we're going through. It doesn't matter if you are a family member, a gene positive or at risk, we all understand everything. So it's, it gives you like this, this power and it gives you the feeling you are at the right place with the right people. And that's why I always say we are a family because it doesn't matter from where we are and even if we don't know each other personally, like it was the case, we, we know each other because we share the same stories. So I think that's, that's a beautiful thing. And that's something very, very unique. That's, that's really great. Thank you. And I'm going to keep up on that and ask you, Jessica, what would you say to someone who is watching this? and who is a bit timid to reach out, you know, for the first time, either for support or to share their perspective. What would you say to them? Do not underestimate your voice, your feeling, or the things that you think you're doing. Do not underestimate this community. Yes, it is very difficult to have this disease in your family. But at the same time, we are a huge family and you're not alone. Even though you feel like it, you're not alone. We are worldwide, literally. So just do it, use your voice, use your power and join us, our, your family, so we can be all together. And that's the only way we can do better things. That's, that's really a great advice. Thank you. Rob, what would you say? Uh, I, I would almost want to say, here, here. I totally agree. Um, no, but it's true. Huh? Like, you know, we are, so we were able to get to Strasbourg because of how we were connected or how, you know, but there are a lot of voices that we don't hear. And those are the voices that we need to hear. You know, it's not, I always say like, it's not always useful for me to be there a second or a third time. People have heard me. We need new people always, like next generations, younger people, older people, parents, children, whatever you want. Everybody needs to be on the table one way or another. So, and if you think that, you know, I've said this before somewhere, it's like, even if you just share something on Facebook, you know, like repost something or you don't have to sit at the table with pharma to make an impact. Just sharing a bit of information or just connecting with somebody from the community that lives five kilometers away from you is already a way to make an impact on somebody's life. And I think, you know, it starts with the small things. And then, of course, not everybody can do or wants to do whatever we do. That's also fine, you know, but then don't take me as an example. Just be a good human. And just reach out to people. I think that is the thing you can do. That's uh, if, you, if that is the minimum you do, you're you're doing well. That's that's amazing, really. Thank you for for sharing this. And we're coming to an end. And Rob, I um, want to ask you, you know, looking ahead, how do you see your advocacy work evolving after this experience? What do you hope to achieve? Well, I think what I would. You know, we're now at exciting times. We have the first, let's say, process with the EMA that is ongoing. We have many, com many companies going to phase one, two, hopefully three. So as I said, we have there a lot of challenges ahead of us in recruiting these kind of studies. I mean, that's not our responsibility, but we can be part of the solution. Let's put it like that. Um, so I hope we will have a lot of these kind of interactions as we had in Strasbourg with different companies, but also the round table for years to come, just to keep emphasizing and, and addressing the issues at hand at that moment. Uh, and 
I, I hope to be part of that, but uh, it's just that I don't need to be part of it. As long as we as a community are there and facilitate these kind of things, I think that is the important thing. And then, uh, yeah, then I see the future quite bright in general. And then, yeah, my own advocacy will be what it will be. Let's say I'll just help where I can. Thank you. Really, really thank you. And Jessica, how do you see your work evolving after this? Um, I hope that we get, as I always say, more information and awareness about this disease. And I just put all my energy in training and teaching because I think that's where everything starts. So once you, it's like the saying, I mean, knowledge is power. So once we get people to know about this disease, we are going to be huge. Yeah, people need to know us. So thank you, thank you both. Do you have any? Closing thoughts, methods you want to share? No. I have one. Yeah. I have one. Please join us. Come, we can support you. We can hear you. You can be here. You don't have to share if you don't feel like to. This is the, the best thing about this community that you're basically free to do whatever you're comfortable with, sharing whatever you want to share. And as Jessica said before, you know, you, you won't be judged because we know what's going on. We are kind of living the same situation and we're always open. That's something that I, I always say I love about this community. It's, you know, this, this, um, this feeling that you're always, always welcome, no matter what. And I want to thank you both really, really much for sharing your thoughts, your opinions, and your views on this. And uh, really, thank you, thank you so much. And just just to, to wrap up, I mean, this is your safe place to join yeah. and to be. And like I said, we are a family, so just come. You just need to say hello, and here we are. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you for joining us for this HDU Community Stories. Remember that we are all here for you at any time, and you can reach out at any time at hdyo.org.